Psalms 19, verse 1 to 3. The heavens declare the glory of God. The heavens. The heavens. When the scripture talks about the heavens in plural form, the heavens, layers, the layers of the realms above us, layers of the order higher than us, whether it is in the physical heavens, the physical heavens as in the, the skies and beyond the skies, the habitation of the flying objects in the physical heavens, and the origin of the they were not original in this, like where the, the rain falls from, where the dews come from, where the elements, the dews, the rain, the snow, and other stuffs. So the physical heaven, according to this scripture, the physical heavens declare the glory of God. The homeland of the rains, the homeland of dews, of frost. And the homeland of other things high there, high up there. The homeland of the eagles, the flying objects, the heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament shows his handiwork. We are still going back to the heavens. And so we also talk about the heavens of the supernatural. Beyond the heavens of the physical realm. The supernatural realms, the realms above man. Whether, and when we talk about the realm above man, there is the realm above man which is evil, diabolic, satanic. The realm of principalities and power where the crafts of witches originate from. Where the crafts and the signs of occult originate from. Where the signs and the, or the practices of the marine originate from. They too, they declare the glory of God. They recognize, they know. And when they meet situations that carry the glory of God, they say, this one is different. And when they meet somebody with the deposit of the divine, the seal and the mark of God over that person, they too declare that this one is glorious. They don't like it, but they acknowledge it. They say this one is beyond us to destroy. This one is beyond us to, to keep. This one is beyond us to cripple. Oh, this one is beyond our reach. So the heavens of witchcraft, the heavens of the marine, the, the heavens of occult, the heavens of principalities and power and the host of wickedness. As the scripture says in Ephesians chapter 6, in the heavenly places, this other heaven too, they declare the glory of the Lord. And then there is the heaven of heavens. The highest heaven. The heaven of the most high God. The one who dwells in the imperium of heaven. The one who oversees the affairs of the spirits and human. The one who sits atop and above all things and all beings. Who has been, who is, and who will be forever. That heavens too. That's the realm of the seraphs. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1. In the year that King Uzzah died, I saw the Lord enthroned. I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his rope filled the temple. See what happens. This was not happening in the temple that was physical. This was happening in the heavens, the heaven of heavens. So he had a vision of the presence of God in the heavenly place, but transposed to the reality of the temple that he could see. Because God does not dwell physically in the temple. His presence is captured and experienced, encountered in the temple. But it's infinitely greater than what the temple can, 
can carry and can contain. So, I saw the Lord sitting above. Give me verse 1, sir. You should follow me. I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lifted up. And the train of his robe filled the temple. Glory to God. Next verse. Above it stood seraphim, each one had six wings. With two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one declared. One spoke to another. One spoke, declared, announced to another. One cried. To another. Ah, one informed. So they were not addressing God. They were declaring among themselves. They were declaring among themselves. And what's the declaration? Holy. Holy. Holy is the Lord. They didn't say, Holy are you, Lord. They were not addressing Him. They were talking about him. <laughs> they were declaring who he is. They were testifying of him. Just want you to, to follow me. Follow me. Are you following me? I want to give you reasons. God said I should come and give you reasons to thank God, to praise God, to talk about God. They were talking about God. They were testifying of his nature, of his inherent character. They were, they were, they were describing him. They were describing what they knew in him. They were describing what they saw in him. They were describing what they perceived in him. They were describing what they saw about him. What they had heard about him. Their experience and encounter in him. This was their experience, their knowledge, their conviction. This was what they knew and how they knew it. And it was holy. Holy. Holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full. They didn't say of your glory. So, God is exalted, but they are talking among themselves. <laughs> Having the experience of God translated into their conversation. I don't know what you talk about. <laughs> when God is exalted, what is it that you talk about? In the hospital, God is exalted. What, what Ezekiel saw was God exalted in the temple. But God doesn't live in a temple. That's where he captured the reality. The revelation of his exaltation and the announcement. The divine conversation about this reality. So you can be in the hospital, on the hospital bed. And you know that the Lord is exalted. Even there in that hospital. And so you can choose to talk about, I shall not live. This sickness shall kill me. I shall not survive. This is too much for me to bear. That's it. It can be a conversation while God is exalted. Because God is exalted. In every conversation you have with your wife, with your spouse, with your, with your friends, with your children, with your neighbor, with, concerning your job, God is exalted. There has never been a time, there is no time, and there will never be a time that God is not on the throne. He is highly exalted. But what makes the difference is what you say about him. Glory to God. Rise to your feet and shout a loud hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, I love this be seated. Are you, are you catching the picture? Absolutely. So beautiful. In a time of pain, he's exalted. Pain does not bring him down. Sorrow does not bring him down. Misfortune does not. No, whatever circumstance, whatever condition, whatever you are facing, does not in any way lower his rank 
and diminish his wonder. So while you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he's still exalted. What makes the difference is what do you perceive? What do you understand of him? What do you think of him? What do you hear of him? What do you know of him? And what do you say of him? The seraphs, they show us something. And one cried so another and said, Holy, <laughs> in this pain, he is holy. In this, sorry and, in this sorrow and this season, he is holy. Holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Next verse. <laughs> glory to God. And the posts. And the posts of the door of the temple where Ezekiel captured him. And I told you it does not dwell in, in the temple. It dwells in the heavens and is beyond limits. But his experience is captured there. Hospital bed can be a temple where he is captured. The place of weeping and tears may be the temple. After all, in the New Testament, the temple is no longer a physical place. Objectively, objectively there. In the New Testament, the temple is now a subject. The temple is a person. So in the midst of everything, you can see him exalted in the temple. <laughs> and when you leave every other thing and talk about him and declare him and announce what you know of him, not what you know of your condition, and announce what you see in him and not what you see in your situation, and announce what you perceive and understand in him, and not what you perceive and understand in things around you, something happens to your temper, to the place of your encountering him. Something happens at the physical, tangible, body, spirit, and soul of somebody. And the posts of the door were shaken by the voice of him who cried out. Listen, it is not God that caused the post. Come on. <laughs> Pay attention. Let's, what does the scripture say? At the voice of him who cried out. Who cried out in this case? Who cried out in this case? It was not God that cried out. The seraphs cried out. One to another. So their voices, because their voices were talking about the truth. The truth that God is holy. Their voices, they were crying about, crying out about the excellency of his nature. The excellency of his wonder. The excellency of his power. The excellency of his signs and miracles and potence. They were talking about the excellency, his exaltation and heights above all things. Their voice then became an instrument in the hand of God. So God's power did not have to come. Their voices became the power of God. Oh, so what you say is what God does. And he told the people of Israel in the, in the days that they said, I will do it just as, as I hear you speak in my hearing. That which you have spoken to my hearing is the one that I will do. Glory to God. God is not interested in doing what your enemies say about you. God is not interested in doing what witches and wizards are saying about you. What the, the foes, those who say you cannot go in, those who say you will never get to the next, those, what, that's not the interest of God. God, works, God. God waits as you wake up in the morning. What do you say? What do you say? And the seraph tell us what to say. You don't wake up and tell him you have pain. He already knows that's not the issue. That's not the real thing. There is a time there was no pain. There is pain now, but pain will, always, will not always be there. But he has always been holy. You see, the, the, the word holy here is repeated thrice. Have you ever thought about it? He who is, who was, and is to come. Right now is holy. Then he was holy. And then 
you will be holy. It means the seraph, they were declaring holy rest to power three. Holy in the past, holy in the present, and holy in the future. Just rise and speak your holy to the past, to the present, and to the future. Raise your hand and just say holy. Just holy. Just speak those words intentionally. To your past is holy. In your past is holy. In your presence, your present time is holy. In the present tense is holy. In the past tense is holy. In the future tense is holy. In the present continuous tense is holy. In the past perfect is holy. In the past participle is holy. Glory is relevance. Glory. So before the ancestors were born, holy. That's the most real thing. Before the people of the ancients made useless sacrifices and spoke about a future that will not be glorious. Who is see? Holy. So that's what you talk about. That's what matters. That was, that's what makes morning a new day. That's holy. Because yesterday is holy. And it's the same yesterday. It's the same today. And it's the same forever. Shout holy. Let's see the glory to God. I'm excited. To God. <laughs> oh. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. At their cry, at the shout of their voice, and the post of the door were shaken by the voice. They who cried out. And the house was filled with smoke. I'm sure you can find reasons there why you should talk about what God does, who God is, and what God has done for you. At this, I'm sure from this scripture you can find out the reason to praise. Is that our economy is so bad or dollars? unbuyable and um, fear, unreachable and yeah before all of this holy in the midst of all of this holy after all of this is gone the next thing will be holy <laughs> and then we know that at the voice of him who cries the puss of the, of the temple. Let's see that scripture. At the voice of him who cries, the post of the door was shaken. And when things are shaken in the presence of God, then diseases disappear. Shackles and yokes and bonds and chains, they, they, they just dissolve and mountains, they melt like wax. Because he's holy. Wow. Acts of Apostles chapter 16 has an experience there for you. But that's not our interest. Psalms 22 and from verse 22 to 38 still giving you some reasons. If the heavens can declare, the heavens declare. The heavens declare. The angels declare. And Jesus did not die for the angels. Jesus did not die for the demons to have superiority over you. Jesus did not die for the eagles in the first heavens. He did not die for the rains. He died for us. So that's the reason. So you ask us yourself, <clears throat> if the heavens would declare if the heavens will declare the glory of God, the word declare here means announce. It means to preach. If they will preach the glory of the Lord, if the heavens, the blue skies, the setting of the sun and the rising of the sun, 
and the orange horizon of the fading sun and the if they if they would declare announce preach while they change and transform they preach to us of the glory of God what have you been doing the seraphs it did not die for them this is what they declare night and day they do not cease what do you do Psalms 22 from verse 22 to 28 I will declare I will declare you are the one. beautiful beautiful I will declare your name to my brethren now we have stepped down the seraphs were speaking to themselves to each other to one another but now it is you and I I will declare your name to my brethren in the midst of the assembly I will praise you in the midst of the assembly I will praise you you who fear the Lord praise him <laughs> so first of all it starts I a commitment will declare your name not to my heart that's meditation not to my mind that's meditation I will declare to my brethren I will let brethren know I will let brethren male and female know in the midst of the assembly it's not only just in the place of or in some private places I say oh have you heard of what let me tell you what God has done for me. This one in the midst of the kahal. The word assembly here in Hebrew is kahal. There's the call out of the ancient. Those who, who were summoned unto Yahweh. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. I will talk of the good things you have done. That's what praise is. I will talk. No, that's not praise. I will talk about your great qualities, your awesome characteristics, your awesome nature. Or talk of your excellencies. Or talk of your might. And it's only because God is mighty that he delivers us. So when we testify, we are talking of his might. We are declaring his might. When we testify of healing, it's not about healing us. We are affirming, declaring, preaching announcing to brethren the power of God the healing power of God that's called praise when you talk about the excellency of my life and talk about oh this man he's a good singer this guy sings so greatly have you heard him sing oh this man is such a great speaker have you heard him have you heard him speak ah, ah, this man is such a mighty, have you heard, have you seen him in warfare? What you are doing is you are talking about my nature. It is because I'm mighty that I win in battles. It is because I'm so good at singing that I sang well the other time. I'm not actually talking about, you know, you understand, like I'm talking about us, like, <laughs> because you will now say, when last did you sing well? Like, we are trying to remember. So like I'm talking about the me of the spirit. Praise God. <laughs> Glory to God. I sing so beautiful well. So beautifully but in the spirit. Praise God. The spirit. Outside the spirit we have to qualify. So I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly I will praise you. You who fear the Lord. Now the next thing is. Is talking about somebody else. You who fear the Lord. Talk about his good thing. Talk about his great nature. Talk about his ability. Talk about his power. Talk about his majesty. Talk about his goodness. A lot of times we, we talk about the wickedness of people, the, the stubbornness of people, the, the wickedness, of the, the, the bad-heartedness of people, the, mouth, the bad mouth, mouthedness of people. But we don't talk about the greatness of God. The greatness of God far supersedes the wickedness of man. And because of the enormity and the immensity of God's greatness, the wickedness of man does not have permission to, to slow us down. Shout, hallelujah. Say, you who fear the Lord, praise him. Talk about his greatness. 
all you descendants of Jacob glorify him and fear him all you who all you offspring of Israel why verse 24 begins to give a personal reason for he has not despised nor abandoned the affliction of the afflicted no he's too faithful nor has he hidden the, his face from him but when he cried to him he heard my praise shall be of you in the great assembly I'm not going to come talk about witches and wizards. Those of you who go to places where the only thing they talk about is who is a new witch, who is going to kill you. You belong to witchcraft governments. And I want to trust God today that God will save you. You need to read the Bible. You need to hear the teaching of the word of God and become what you hear. So in this assembly, we talk about the greatness of God. Talk about the minds of God. Talk about the power of God. Why should I know about the power of witchcraft after I have known about the power of God? Why should I know who is the witch? What, how, what is the significance of him me know of me know of me knowing who is, who is in witchcraft when I have known who is for me? The one who died for me. His death was not accident. He did not fall from a tree. He mounted the tree. And gave his life for me. So when, why should I then worry about who is against me? When I already know that the one for me feels everywhere. And is everything. And he does all things. Glory. Shout glory. Rise to your feet. And just shout glory to Jesus. Shout it louder. Glory to Jesus. Shout it the third Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Make it your anthem to God. Most. What do I? Why do I need to care and know to care to know the, the different realms of witchcraft and the different realms of the marine and the different realms of the wickedness of men and the different realms of why? Why should I care to know if I know the different realms of his might, the different realms of his glory, the different realms of his wonder, of his signs and power? To God. Oh. So let those who fear him talk about him and not worry about what is not working for them and not worry about who is not helping them. Let those who fear him talk about him and not talking about those who want to kill them and spending too much time, precious time given. Time is given to you by God and you are not using time to talk about God. You are, you, you are not using time to find out the mysteries of God. To find out the, what God says in his word. To find out in the teaching of God. You use the time granted you by God to look for witches and wizards. Can you imagine how corrupt your mind is? How corrupt your thinking. God gives you time. You don't use time to seek him. To sit with him. To study his word. To know him. And to talk about him. And you are using his time to talk about wicked people. To talk about wicked spirits. To look for the enemy. Who gave you time? Give you time. Look. Yeah. Two. More. What you are not able to overcome now is because you have not known in God. The power to overcome that. What you fear now is because you have not known in God. What is greater than what you fear? So it's not knowing the names and the places and the time. And you're not sleeping in the night. You say, wake up in night, midnight or they'll come. Twelve, and wake, wake up every one, one hour because they will come. At least when they come, let them meet you with your eyes open. Now you now become the God who watches over you. And this time is given to you by God anyway. And you don't spend this time for God and with God. Shame unto you. To God. Oh. Lift up your two hands and say, this time belongs to my God. 
My time belongs to my God. I use the time of God for God. My time is for searching out God. My time is for knowing God. My time is for serving God. My time is for loving God. My time is not about the enemy. My time is not about the wicked one. My time is not about the one who does not love me. My time is for the one who loves me. Jesus who died for me. Shout Jesus. Patrick Grace Henry is the president, Grace Family Commonwealth of Champions. Worship with us every Sunday in any of our services, Rising Stars Assembly by 7 a.m. and Champions Family Assembly by 9 a.m. Earth Live on Planet 101.1 FM and Spectrum TV at 10 a.m. Every Thursday for Word Power Encounter by 5 p.m. Venue Goshen, Kilometer 14, Wangiba Road, Ekamban Sukara, Uyo, Akwaibum State. Join our live streaming on Facebook, YouTube at Grace Family Outreach and on the Christ Radio app. You can become a part of this great revolution by becoming a partner today. To all our partners and friends, we say thank you. For partnership, please call 0907-383-8742. For prayers, counseling, and inquiries, please call 0818-043-3225 or 0803-671-5303. Grace Family, raising champions from ordinary people.